So I, catch a love I, I googled, are there any Australian superheroes? Yeah. And Manifold oh, is, has become the most prominent Australian hero in the modern Marvel Universe. Now, Manifold has not made it into the MCU, the Marvel <laughs> Cinematic Universe, Manifold. but there's, there's comic books about this. And so, yes, Chris Hemsworth is from, there's a lot of people that have acted in um, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Hugh Jackman, right. But here's what's amazing. I looked that up. That's part of this. You go down this yeah. rabbit hole. Hugh Jackman is Australian. And at some point, they actually considered making Logan slash Wolverine yeah. Australian. But instead, because especially because he is Australian, right? Yeah. But he's from, yeah, the, yeah. from the, you know, whatever. He's become and attached it, to the role. Yeah, of course. And actually, um, they decided to make Logan. They kept him Canadian. So Logan's Canadian, <laughs> just so you understand where Australia is in, within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is they're like, no, 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 better to, better to keep him Canadian. He's not even American. Right, no, he's, no, he's not American. Like, 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 we're going for a lesser country. <laughs> no. Right, right. But it's going to be Canada, not Australia. I, I don't know. Listen, this is not me talking. This is Marvel. Yeah. This I is stand tall without Canadian viewers uh, getting destroyed by Matthew Barry. Long live so the Commonwealth. You went, to, you, went to, you went to the same high school as Chris Hemsworth. I did. If yes. we were to go back and what's the name of the high school? Heathmont College. Heathmont College, which yeah. is not a high school. It's a college. Well, no, that's, it's, it's a high school. It's like, uh, yeah, when you're But why is it called a college? I don't know. It's what we do in Australia. It's Fair. to like, make it sound more fancy. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you guys both went to Heathmont College, which is a high school in Australia. If we went back today to mm. visit Heathmont College, yes. is, there like an, is there like a Hall of Fame? Is Chris Hemsworth in that? He would be in it. Right? I is would not brother, be. I was going to ask. <laughs> yeah. And then are you, I would are not you be in others receiving fame. votes maybe? It, can we get like a little, like yeah, a little I'm, postage I'm, stamp uh, size picture of I'm you? I'm Jarek McKinnon. There you I'm go. I'm Jarek McKinnon. In, yeah. in he's the, he's uh, Damien thing. Pierce. I would assume Liam Hemsworth as well, the other Hemsworth. I think he went there as well, but I'm not 100% sure. All right, I but know you just Chris know did. you know Chris did. Yeah. I'm friends with Chris. Yeah. And, but, well, I'm I've, not. I've met him twice. Yeah. I mean, you know, I did a scene with him. So yeah. I spent two days with him on set. Yeah. And then I, I, I talked to him a little bit at the, um, uh, at the, uh, at the uh, after party. Sure. At the uh, yeah. Avengers, whatever, the uh, premiere party, everything yeah. like that. And there's actually, it's hilarious. There's a picture of me and my wife and Crips Hemsworth. And um, it's just like, who, and my wife is very attractive, and so it's just like, and Chris is obviously gorgeous, yes. and so it's just like, who's this really attractive couple <laughs> with like their, you know, their weird uncle? Yeah, he's uh, doing, because, like, doing it's, love I, hate it's columns like, oh, on it's, Christian it's, have, I'll, I'll bring in the picture tomorrow. I'll, yeah. I'll like, I'll see if I can send yep. it to you. But yep. like, it's anyway. Let's get yeah. to Christian Kirk. Yes, I have a gnawing suspicion Chris Hemsworth has no idea who I am, and I think that Christian Kirk might not either. But let's talk about him in the positive because he's on your love list. Yeah, I mean, listen, Chris Hemsworth won the Agbo Superhero League uh, uh, the first year. I played in a fantasy league with him. He's a good fantasy football player, as is Christian Kirk, who's had a 26% target share over the last four games, Jay Croucher. And why are we saying Christian Kirk should be a, a top 15 play this week? Because he's had not only that massive target share, but most of his targets come from the slot. Why does that matter? Because they're playing Kansas City Chiefs. And the Chiefs are bottom five in the NFL in terms of most catches and yards allowed in the slot. They're tied for the most touchdowns allowed to players coming out of the slot. The eighth most yards overall to opposing wide receivers in a game in which the Jaguars are obviously underdogs. They should be throwing and throwing quite a bit against the Kansas City Chiefs. I think Christian Kirk has a big game on Sunday against KC. Yep. Let's go to Chris Olave, who just keeps on producing regardless of his quarterback. Yeah, 70 yards or a touchdown in six of the past seven games. He's averaging 15.4 fantasy points per game. Even last week against the Ravens, a game in which, you know, the Saints couldn't do anything. He still was fine, right? He still got you something. He's had a 27% target share in the last seven games as well. I like this matchup against the Steelers. No team in the NFL gives up more yards per game to opposing wide receivers than the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've given up 13 touchdowns to opposing wide receivers. That's most in the NFL. Where is Jameis Winston or the Red Rifle going to throw? It's going to be Chris Olave. Yeah, no, Chris Olave has an incredibly high floor and also quite a high ceiling. Uh, Alan Lazard, who's really been sneakily, outside of Aaron Jones when healthy, the only good thing about the Green Bay offense, and you think he keeps it going against the Cowboys. Yeah, I really do. Um, you know, look, as much as the Packers offense has struggled, especially in their passing attack, Alan Lazard has been great. He's had at least 11 and a half fantasy points in every game since week two. He scored in five of the seven games he's played so far this year. Think about last week. Look, understand the balls all went to Detroit Lions, but at least Aaron Rodgers was trying to get it to Lazard. He had three end zone targets last week. 
He's had five straight games with a tw- target share of 20% or better. No Robio Dobbs is out. We don't know if Aaron Jones is going to play. We hope that he is, but he's banged up as well. Randall Cobb obviously out. Like, Al Lazard is going to get a big target share in a game in which, as you mentioned, they're five-point underdogs to the Dallas Cowboys. It's, it's not a great matchup for Lazard, but I think volume gets you there, and he's probably got a chance at a touchdown here. He's a top-20 play for me this week. Yep, Trayvon Diggs is scary as an opposing cornerback, but he's not. Jalen Ramsey, Pat Sertan, I don't think quite. So I think on volume, you're right. Lazard should produce. Another guy who we expect to produce is the great Greg Dolchich, who has come from the clouds and is now pretty hyper-relevant uh, at a very weak tight end position. Something positive to say about the Denver Broncos. I mean, the, yeah. the list of things to say about positive about the Denver Broncos. Pat Sertan. Pat Sertan. The defense generally. The, je- the defense in general. Dolchich. And the fact that I went on national television. Oh, no and predicted them to win when no one else on Football Night in America did. Wow. Against the 49ers, they did, in fact, win. Yeah. And that gave me a game up in the standings. All these uh, Hall of Fame coaches, former NFL pro quarterbacks, like all these super smart people. Yeah. And here's they the fantasy down. guy who's got the best record as we enter week 10. Yeah. This guy. Chris thank Hemsworth's you very much. Best let's ride. Yeah, let's ride. And so ride. that's, I mean, when you think about the highlights of the Broncos season, I think that's got to be one of them. But yes, Dulcis is also on the list as well. You know, since he came back from injury, he's been a top 12 fantasy tight end every single week. He's averaging over 60 yards in the three games since he came off IR, uh, almost a 20% target share. And it's a nice matchup against the Tennessee Titans. Again, we expect not a lot of points to be scored here, but how are they going to move the ball? It's the number one run defense, and now they got to throw, right? But Russell Wilson's been inconsistent. Worth noting, though, that the Titans do allow the six most fantasy points to opposing tight ends. Last week, they were doing, they were bracketing Travis Kelsey. They had three guys on him. They're playing zones, and yet still, they managed to get the ball to Travis Kelsey. So Titans, who are bottom five in the NFL in both most receptions and yards allowed to tight ends as well, Dolchitz is a top eight tight end for me this week. I feel like they're not going to bracket Greg Dolchitz this week. Let's go no, no. to others receiving votes, headlined by Brandon Ayuk. Yeah, look, uh, Ayuk's had three straight games with over 80 receiving yards, a real connection with Jimmy Garoppolo. How about Darnell Mooney against the Lions with his 29% target share so far this season? That's eighth highest among wide receivers. We all love Justin Fields, you know. Uh, hint, he may be coming up on the love list here. Miko Hardman has four straight games with double-digit fantasy points. You like the match with Jacksonville. And, hey, Donovan Peoples-Jones has 70 more yards in four of the last five games if you're looking for some tight ends. Kate Otten and, hey, I'm in on the Bears against the Lions. Cole Komet should score. <laughs> That's bad. A renaissance for Cole Komet yes. as well. Yes. All right, let's get negative. Let's talk right. hate who's list. Who's on the hate list? Yeah, who's on the hate list? Kamari Cooper? Yes, Kamari Coop- Ka- Hooper is on the hate list. You know why? Because this game, not in Cleveland. Yes. This game is on the road. And it, when you think about when you think about this Miami defense, right, um, We probably Xavier Howard is going to shadow Amari Cooper. And being in, in on the road has not been good for Amari Cooper this year. He's had three road games. He's averaging 5.7 fantasy points per game, where he's been averaging over 21 points in his five home games. And so on the road at Miami, uh, Dolphins allowing the eighth fewest yards per game to perimeter wide receivers since week five. I, I just, you probably still have to start Amari Cooper. I mean, let's be clear. I mean, I still have him as a, you know, borderline wide receiver two this week but given how good he's been so far this year it's much lower than I would normally have him given the 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 shadow of Howard and being on the road and how well the Dolphins defense has played against perimeter wide receivers so just the hate list is always about lowering expectations yep that makes sense to me okay always hate to see this name on the hate list I know this one pains you Terry McLaurin yeah I look I mean He's probably going to get Darius Slay on Monday like night as a shadow. What? You don't like that? You don't no, like the I Darius don't like Slay that. matchup? No, I mean, look, he is he is somewhat on some level matchup proof. I mean, look, and let's be clear, like Slay was on him uh, in week three this year uh, a decent amount, and he had a nice game against the Eagles, six for 102 on nine targets. And Taylor Heineke does look for him quite a bit, but this is a Monday night game against a division rival. Eagles are really going to get up. They've allowed the lowest catch rate to wide receivers so far this season. They're allowing the second fewest yards per game to perimeter wide receivers. I'm just nervous that, um, uh, you know, that Taylor Heineke may not be ready for prime time. He's been somewhat inconsistent. The Eagles defense is going to be the best defense that Heineke sees all season. And so, again, you're still starting McLaurin. Like, I'm at wide receiver 22, but this is lower than I would normally have him as well. 
Also, by the way, you're not starting Mike Gusecki. It's yep. the one piece of the Dolphins offense we don't want. Browns allow the seventh fewest fantasy points to opposing tight ends. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotoworld, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.